My name is Maggie Chow. I am a fellow here at the Society of Fellows at Columbia and a lecturer in the Department of Art History and Archaeology. I got my PhD in art history at Harvard. I'm a historian of American art and material culture of the primarily of the 18th and 19th century. I really and my work tends to revolve around um, issues of pictorial thinking. So how an artist marshals the tools of image making and um, the pictorial space to understand issues and problems that um, originate outside of art. So in the sphere of sciences or economics, for instance. I suppose I came to art history because I've always been a visual thinker. And within art history, the types of things I end up wanting to study are always um, these very strange and eccentric objects. I'm sort of attracted to the, the outliers. Um, so, you know, in my landscape project, there's paintings that look like money. There's also landscapes that are actually made out of bird feathers, like collage, of, collage made of bird feathers. And these are things that sort of fall outside of a kind of standard deviation, you know, within the field. But personally, because I'm interested in issues of you know, pictorial thinking, I'm, I, I find these strange things to be, in fact, much more conceptually interesting. And in that sense, I'm, I feel like as a scholar, what I do is trying to, in some sense, recuperate the logic of, of, of objects that seem um, on the surface completely illogical. I'm working on a book project right now that is based on my dissertation and it's on the end of landscape in American art. I'm looking at the decline of a very significant and nationally meaningful landscape painting tradition in the United States in the 19th century and um, I'm really interested in how the pictorial conventions of that genre. So for instance, you know, the compositional interest in um, making open pathways in a painting or uh, the investment in scientific um, specificity with representing details of nature, how these conventions then um, come to become inadequate in the face of new ideas about space and geography and land. It's interesting because here we have an instance in which a period in history where an image actually can travel faster than, than text, right? And that's gonna change historically because think about like when, for instance, when the telegraph gets invented, then text will travel faster than images. I'm teaching art humanities in the core curriculum and this is a course that teaches students how to think about and analyze visual art um, and it's based on the monuments and artists that have contributed to the western tradition. I'm trying to teach the class actually as a kind of non-disciplinary course um, so a course that may be about studying the so-called masterpieces of western art but what I'm hoping that the students will take away ultimately for the, in the long run is not knowledge about specific artwork so much as a, you know, a tool, the tools of visual thinking and um, a, an ability to understand these broader questions of visual representation. Um, so for instance, the other day I brought my students to the um, Rare Book and Manuscript Library at Columbia and we looked at Renaissance prints. Um, but what I wanted the students to think about were not just the, the you know, the Raphael or the Albrecht Durer, but um, we ended up discussing things like how does mechanical reproduction uh, change definitions of authenticity. And then I also had them try their hand at making their own prints, so I had them uh, uh, basically, I gave them sheets from National Geographic or from a Dr. Seuss book, and I told them they had to, you know, translate that image into a reverse drawing using just lines. It was kind of like a laboratory, I think, for them to think about what goes into the artistic process, and I think a lot of them then came out of it understanding that actually the issue of copying, for instance, has a really, you know, many meanings when it comes to visual, visual production. 
As a fellow here, I work on my own research as well as present work and share my work with other fellows. A lot of my own work is interdisciplinary and so I'm really um, looking forward to all the conversations that will happen amongst um, the community here. And already I've had great discussions about landscape and environment with Rebecca Woods, who works on environmental history, and I can't wait to hear what Will Derringer will tell me about my work on landscape and economics. So I'm really hoping that those discussions will lead to collaborations and will lead me to um, have new perspective on my own work.